Hello, you've just seen me try a kata. I'm not very good at those. I'm much better at the coding variant and the data miner one. In fact, I've got an Empower kata lined up just for you. Hello and welcome to Bringing the Thunder. In this Empower kata, we're going to be doing a infinitely reusable or infinitely uh, restartable exercise that everyone watching, me and my guest, can all do at the same time over and over and over again. And at the end of the exercise, you'll even get some DevOps points, but only once. So don't, don't think you can farm DevOps points constantly with the same exercise. But anyway, let me start by introducing the expert who's going to guide all of us through one of these katas. I have with me here, Thais. Thank you, Jan. Hello. So who are you? What Hello. do you do? Um, I'm Thais. I'm an engineering manager at Skyline. I work already here for 11 years. and. Basically, I'm here to support and guide a team of uh, people to integrate uh, projects on Datamire. So we work Great. daily based with Datamire and we do all kinds of cool stuff. Excellent. Now, you come from, because I remember starting around the same time as you. So mm -hmm. we all started with writing connectors, pretty yes. much. At yep. least we did. And what we're seeing on the screen here is a connector that I wrote, but I was a bit quick in writing it. And in fact, as you can probably see, it's it's a bit broken. So the code isn't the best, mm -hmm. I'll admit, but okay. that's the point. So we have a broken connector here. And the exercise is that everyone, you, well, me, I'm going to watch, okay. but everyone can actually try and fix this code. Now, I'm the owner of this code, but everyone should be able to say, hey, Jan, you made some mistakes. I fixed them for you. Here you go. Yeah. This, this is it. So, all right. So today we're here we about do? learning how to get started and yes. how can anyone basically contribute to connector yes. to development, automation and, um, scripts, connectors, yeah, just improve something. DevOps all the way. All right. So if we if we take a look here on the data miner system, we see your element. Um, it's supposed to have some um, functionings in there. I see button start, stop timer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. actually, if I press the buttons, I don't see anything happening. So most likely something is wrong. And now I would like to have a look and yes. fix it myself and see if we can get it to work. So we're, we're gonna wanna have the, the source code. Yes, indeed. So uh, the source code is located on GitHub. Uh, this repository is under the Skyline Communications um, organization. Yes. So if you would go to GitHub, you search for Skyline Communications in there, you will be able to search for repositories and- You can um, look for exercise. Yes, if you I would look for exercise, quite fast, you can get into this one, okay. SLC, see DevOps exercise one. So for sure, um, the first step, everyone can do this. Yeah, you, go you open go the browser of your these. choice. Yeah. You go to GitHub, look for Skyrim communications, and then do a second search for exercise. Indeed. And as you can see, this is a public rep repository. So anyone can actually uh, do this exercise here with us. Yes. Of course, we not everyone will have access to write and cha make changes into no, this no. repository because the owner, eh? only the owner can choose yes. uh, all of these things. So in my case, I want to now still have a look and do some contributions. Yes. But in order to do that, I'm starting off by creating a fork. So okay. a fork, what does that mean? Um, basically, I'm going to create um, a kind of a, a copy, copy yeah. a copy of that code onto my own repository. So I'm going to put it on my own name. So um, everyone can do this as well. Yeah. Make a fork. Uh, if you have, yeah, you need you need to have a GitHub account. So feel free to make such an account and then catch up. So GitHub right. account, we're on there. You make a fork, and yes. now I can see at the top taste van Overnacker slash DevOps exercise. Indeed. So, so now, now it's loaded. So basically, now I have my own copy of this piece of code. And now, of course, we want to have a look, see if we can improve it um, and so on. So next step forward is, OK, now we need to put this code locally on my computer. So for that, yes. I'm going to clone um, and, and basically open it up with uh, so Visual yeah, Studio. Big so button there, you open. have different opportunities here. Um, right now, I'm just going to go for open with Visual Studio. Right. This will bring me into Microsoft Visual Studio. And it will already suggest, OK, where do you want to save this repository? And in a few simple clicks, I am ready to get started. Okay. So, so we went from me being the owner to you getting a fork. So yeah. you are the owner of your own copy. Of my own copy. And then yes. now you've cloned it and it's on your local computer. Yes. So indeed. you put it from GitHub to your local machine and Visual Studio is open. 
Yeah. All, All right. right. So in uh, Visual Studio, we already see in Solution Explorer, we have access to the quick actions, to the protocol XML and so on. Yes. But in order to make things easier, I will actually not tweak things yet. I'm first of all going to install DIS, Wait, which is a plugin on Visual Studio. You don't have DIS installed, Taze? No. Well, for this exercise, of course, <laughs> Specifically I'm, I'm going to show you how to do it. Because so everyone can then follow it on. If you do have DIS, fast forward, or maybe you can't if it's a premiere. But anyway, we're going to install yep, indeed. So DIS. Where can you find it? You can, if you go to our community site on Datamire Dojo, uh, there under Expert Hubs Data Miner, you have Integration Studio. Uh, data Miner Integration Studio uh, is basically the plugin um, on okay, Visual Studio. Uh, so we have the download there. button. If we go ahead and start downloading this one. So Visual Studio 2022 for you. Yeah, depending on which version of Visual Studio you have, you yes. choose uh, the option. That's indeed. OK. All right. So it'll download. And once we have that, it's a simple installer. So yes, just, indeed. Uh, um, note that Visual Studio needs to be closed down. So oh, yeah. uh, I'm going to close it right away. If you don't do that, um, it will Give pop you up and warning, ask you, yes. like, please close. Um, I'm going to yeah, and now deploy and install. Install the, the actual uh, yeah. the plugin. Yes. Um, this is only a one-time thing. Um, once it's installed and there are updates in the future, it will automatically yeah, get those get a, pushed get into banner, Visual Studio. Right? And you can choose to, to follow along with updates. Yes. Okay, so and what what DIS briefly like what does it allow us to do? There's so with with DIS we can do multiple things here. We can um, develop and connect to scripts, okay. uh, other items as well um, that that you might come Most across with. Most artifacts and data mining. Indeed, basically yeah, a lot of those artifacts you can uh, work in Visual Studio with DIS plugin. Yes, uh, but it's also having a built-in debugger tool. So if you want to do an investigation or something like that on your local environment or on another system remotely, right. you can attach into the DLLs and really Wow, really go get into the assemblies def, themselves. Full dev style that's and going pretty deep. So great. Yeah, indeed. So okay, so we've installed it, I quite think. Powerful. Indeed. So we've installed it. Next thing, let's go back to Visual Studio and okay. let's have a look at that repository. Right. Okay. So I'm going to open a project or a solution. Mm -hmm. You're going to find one that you cloned earlier from GitHub. So it should be on your local machine. Do you find it? Which one? DevOps. DevOps exercise. Exercise one. Yes. Okay. All right. And here we are. Um, so to make things very simple, in DIS, you also have some cool features like a validate option. Yes. And with this button, it will immediately uh, scan through your whole code and detect certain problems, if there might be any, and look for improvements. So right now, we already know some things might be off, yes. not working correctly. And we can immediately see this window popping up. So if you press Validate button, it will show. The window comes up when you click the Validate yes. button. So OK. And um, there are a few things uh, in there. It's giving like, some major, minor, and warnings, indeed, yeah. I see. And yes. If we want to resolve some of these problems, so for example, if I just click on one of those uh, located problems. An untrimmed um, attribute, yes. Yes, it brings you immediately to the line of code where yeah. uh, the issue resides. So it jumps you. So Great. here it tells indeed an untrimmed attribute um, <clears throat> value in the ID attribute. Um, I could go ahead and, and change it manually. But actually, if, as I'm seeing here, this icon, it means there's an auto fix for it as well. And these ah. auto fixes are quite powerful and useful if you have like tons of them in your uh, code, you can right click probably yes, and you right click, fix. you can go into fix this error. And automatically, it's resolved. And also you see the warning is cleared. Um, same applies, for example, there are some minor warnings, I see in there, there are multiple of the same type. So um, casing problem, it's a casing the... problem. So if we look back at the data miner element, you see there are indeed a we some isn't, weird things isn't, ongoing. Isn't that how you write timer with a capital case R? No. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. So in this case, uh, we're gonna fix it. It's it's maybe not the most critical thing, but at least <laughs> it it sees there is room for improvement. So again, here we can just auto fix these things. And in this case, I'm gonna go ahead with all fixing errors. all errors of this type. And immediately it will do all of those. Yeah, bulk fixes everything of that type. Yeah. So all the casing problems. So we also notice that it has some um, major 
problems. And here, immediately on, on the XML, basically, yep. the DIS extension is having some nice overlays. Reference showing not found. Reference not found, meaning the group is not there. But it also allows us to have some other features, like have this drop down and actually just choose adding. which groups are available and add those into the timer. So 9 and In 11. In this case, yeah. actually, from here, you can already see most likely this is uh, due to a typo or moving a bit too yep. fast, and we were there. So I'm just going to include the two uh, appropriate groups. Mm -hmm. The other two, we can just get rid of those. Um, and right now, let's validate. run the validator again, and ah, we nothing. can actually see so, yeah. everything is um, now, if, fin yeah, fixed. if I remember right, the major ones generally mean that things that break your connector. The yes. minor ones generally things like the casing and, and stuff. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we fixed it now. Um, we can probably, because we have, we showed that one element in the beginning, mm -hmm. we can quickly use DIS yep. to test on a Definitely. staging so environment. If, if I would want to copy over this connector onto my staging environment, yep. I could just go with the right click. And there you will have a copy protocol to clipboard, which yeah. is also something that gets enabled into Visual Studio due to yes. having the IS installed. That's but for here, simple connectors. Yeah, that's yes. for simple connectors. But here actually we can go uh, further because publish. we also have a publish button. If I just go ahead and publish, I can immediately yeah. get this pushed onto that uh, data well, Yeah, for people following along, if you don't have that part, that's fine. Uh, you might, if you have a staging, feel free to play around with the settings of DIS and add it. If you don't, that's all right. It's not exactly part of the exercise, but yep. we're showing it here because it's an optional one. Yep. Huh? And, it, it, well, and it shows moves you. faster uh, yes. to, to do the actual testing. And immediately we saw the element was restarting. Yes. yes. New protocol got applied. I can and see the current we time actually now. need to have already uh, positive um, yeah, yeah, feedback from and, this. Yeah. So if I now start the timer, I see my button works. It changes okay. to running and we have the timer running. Okay, so, so basically. Now, yeah. So you've. Pretty much fixed it, yeah. but now it's fixed on your local machine. Indeed. What are the next steps? How do you tell me as the original owner, yeah. hey man, I fixed some of the problems I found. I've improved your driver. Here you go. Can you verify? Can you apply it so everyone can benefit? Indeed. So right now I'm the owner of my repository. Yes. Containing better improved code than the original. Um, and right now, indeed, it's a matter of making sure we can get that out there so that other people can benefit right. from the public repository. So how we're going to do that? First of all, I would say let's just do a simple save, save all, um, so, yeah. to make sure that all the changes we made are locally stored on my PC. All right. And now the next step ahead is to, of course, bring that into my repository on GitHub. GitHub. Uh, if I go to Git changes, you can already see it detects which files yes. uh, got a change and so on. Um, so at the top, indeed, indeed, with the Git menu, you can do commit or stash, if I remember right. Yes. And it'll open up that window, right? Yes, indeed. Yeah. Um, so I can just write a comment saying, for example, better. I improved <laughs> this code. I write better code than you. No. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we, we can code. commit Good. it and then push it, or we can also do that in one go, commit all and push. Yes. And now, basically, we we We're told telling our GitHub. GitHub, hey, this is the new code. Right. This is a change, and but uh, that's is still on your, your. This is still on my repository. But something cool, Visual Studio knows already of the fact that we were in a fork. That you started with a fork. Yeah. And actually, it's now already showing us this banner successfully pushed to your origin master, and it suggests that we create a pull request. So either I could go. To GitHub, Manually to GitHub probably, yeah. to this repository. If I um, maybe refresh, I can see. Okay, a couple minutes ago, we have some new comments now, You've and it. from here on, you could do just a regular um, pull request. Mm -hmm. But instead, actually, let's maybe go with the button directly from Visual Studio because that's yeah, where you, you as a developer I would mean, also if, be. If they offer it to you, I mean, why not? Yeah. So we click it, and it will bring you to that page immediately, taking the correct branches and everything is ready and. You can just add uh, some additional comments or something like that. Yeah, so that will get sent to the original owner then with a pull request saying, hey, I improved the code. Can you have a look indeed as you're writing here? Again, everyone, feel free to do this. That's the point of the exercise. Yeah. And then we're going to be clicking that button, create pull request. All right. So right now I'm basically telling your branch, hey, look, there is um, new code that you might want to benefit from. Yeah. And from there. Uh, okay. Now, this thing in the background uh, is a little special because we did some automation behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So if you do a pull request, and if everyone does a pull request, it'll automatically close that pull request, but it'll like zip the content of your change and mail it to Thunder at Skylamp.be. And then we're going to actually give you DevOps points. So if you've reached this part and you notice yep. it has closed, and you've done that, that means we sh should have received an email with that content, with your change, and we can actually check it, verify it, and say, bam, you've done it. We'll give you some DevOps points for following along because the more people that do this, the more enthusiastic I get, and that's that's always good. <laughs> you want me more enthusiastic, right? Yep. <laughs> okay, good. Um, are, are we done? Um, yeah, I think that's that's kind of it, right? Nice. We, we fixed the protocol. We Excellent. were able to do all of the steps. Perfect. And well, I hope people I hope you, yes, can uh, follow, try, along. follow along. We'll have all these steps again also through text, so you can try it again or try it on your own time. Eh? Uh, you can also you know go back a bit in the video, see where you need to pick up if you got stuck somewhere. That's all good. Thais, thank you very much for taking some time out of your busy, 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 busy schedule to actually help us out with this. Um, I'll let you go soon. <laughs> I'm just going to say goodbye to everyone else. So thank you for watching this episode of Bringing the Thunder. I hope you found it fun. I hope you found it interesting. And I really hope you learned something new. And I'll catch you on the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>